What's up, Mena Nerds? This video is all about the fate of hundreds of B2 battle droids that survived the Clone Wars. There are a couple different groups, but interestingly, they aren't found in the event dubbed The Last Battle of the Clone Wars, involving Phoenix Squad, Rex, Kalani, B1s, and Droidicas. But previously, Chopper actually saved a B2 and Droidica. After a battle involving the Ghost, Chopper was blown into empty space. Floating around, he was picked up by Zot Scrappers, who discovered that he was a rebel droid. After extracting data that they could sell back to the Empire, they decided to melt him down. But Chopper had secretly hacked a terminal and broadcast a random burst of thousands of different activation codes, which ended up waking up a horde of diverse droids that rose up from the scrap heap. A B2 battle droid is the one that gets the scrapper to release them all, while a droidica is the one that accesses a terminal that closes the door to the melting pot. What's really cool about this is the fact that both parties are Clone Wars droid veterans. Chopper was an astromech pilot in a Y-Wing that was shot down on Ryloth. But in this event, we can see a shocking ability of these droids to display emotions not usually attributed to battle droids, the result of B2s having a survival matrix that allowed them to operate without direct control from a droid control ship. What it takes to survive, and what it means to fight for the CIS, had to change without the Clone Wars or Separatist leadership to direct them. Their droid intelligence adapted, and now identified the enemy as all those who would destroy droids. It wasn't blaster bolts fired by clone troopers that were now killing his fellow CIS battle droids, it was a more abstract concept, the widespread treatment of droids in general. Though these droids wanted to have Chopper as their leader, this ragtag group of droids would become members of the droid Gotra. The Gotra was based deep in the industrial complex of Coruscant, with members that shared differing viewpoints, as wide as being militant, wanting to kill organics indiscriminately, and others just wanting to talk. Some of the former types would work as muscle, or I guess I should say pistons, for the Crimora Syndicate, a pirate group that worked with everyone from the Empire to the Huts. But remember, there were millions of B2s produced during the Clone Wars, and groups of them often found their way into personal defense forces. On Quarantine World 3, the curator Yutani Zane used super battle droids to guard the dangerous Triple Zero droid protocol. This AI was deemed one of the most deadly in the galaxy, but Darth Vader would show up, demonstrating that he was still competent in slicing Separatist droids in two. But perhaps most interesting is that a couple dozen B2s guarded one of the galaxy's safest vaults. On Cato Nymoidia, Paul McCann would rent out vaults to high-paying individuals from across the galaxy, all being protected by B2s and vulture droids. Lor Senteca tried stealing an ancient artifact from this place, but got locked up with a couple B2s inside of his cell. This was in the year 34 ABY, with Leia Organa gaining access to this vault area by asking them to store some of Padme's most prized outfits. Here we see row after row of B2s that secure all of this vault's precious contents. Later we get a cool scene in the ensuing firefight, where Leia used the blaster that would be later given to Rey, in order to blow a hole in the body of these Clone Wars era battle droids, something that surely would have made her mom proud. And the only behind the scenes fact is that these stories come from the Star Wars Rebels magazine Escaping the Scrap Pile, Poe Dameron 21, Darth Vader 3, with droid Gotra details coming from the novel Tarkin. But that's it for the B2 droid survivors. If you want to connect with us, help support the channel, or get your own copies of the reference materials used to make these videos, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, they don't call them super battle droids for nothing, and the force will be with you, always.